And that's what we're trying to do here. We're doing it for free. We're not getting paid. We don't have an agenda. I'm not selling you T-shirts or water bottles or anything. I'm just trying to get the word out because I believe in this message. And I want to thank you for tuning in. So we're going to get into it. And, you know, we still have a ways to go in this broadcast, but we're going to get right to it. Uh, I'm not even going to talk. Well, I'll talk about the article, but I'm not even going to look at it. There's reports already that there's shoppers lining up in front of Best Buy's uh, for Black Friday deals. <laughs> yes, folks, what is today? Thursday, that's a week, over a week away. And the American people are lining up to go buy stuff they don't need because it's a good deal. Aren't you happy that you're not doing that right now? And if you are listening on your TuneIn app and you're in line at some store waiting and you're going to be waiting for the next week, uh, do yourself a favor, stop embarrassing yourself, get out of line right now and go home, Okay. There's a reason why people laugh at this country, and one of them is because we think we're so smart. We think we're so on top of everybody else. We think we have the moral authority to go stick our noses where it doesn't belong in international affairs and in other people's lives. We're $16.5 trillion plus in debt as a nation with our national debt. We're on the verge of complete currency breakdown. We are already experiencing a social breakdown. And what do people do? They go line up to go buy stuff made in China. I don't know. Call me crazy. But like I said last night, I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world, okay? I don't need to line up at Best Buy to go buy some crap I don't need just to make myself feel better, okay? I'm not addicted to consumerism, all right? I don't need to have a credit card to go buy stuff to make me feel better. Now, I've been there. I used to be like that. That's how, the, that's how I was supposed to be, right? That's how I was programmed. And I can remember my old silly self being like that. But once again, I'm in competition with myself. I'm not in competition with you. I'm not in competition with my neighbor. I'm not trying to keep up with any Joneses. I'm trying to be better who, who I, than who I was yesterday. And at the end of the day, I can at least know that I'm trying. And that's what life's all about, right? Learning, trying, try, try again. That's what makes victory that much better. Hard fought victory, hard battle, something along those lines. I don't know. But yes, rest assured, the American people, uh, you know, they're not going to boycott anything. They're not going to stop buying goods that they don't need. They're not going to stop supporting corporate America by not buying stuff. They're going to buy, and they're going to buy, 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 buy. And especially as things get worse, they're going to buy more and more with the dollars that are losing more and more value. Now, I'm going to get right onto this here. This is an article out of dcist.com, D-C-I-S-T. White House says Obama administration will respond to secession petitions. Let's see what dcist has to say about this. As inane as calls to break up the union might sound, the White House plans to issue a response to the hundreds of thousands of citizens who have affixed their names to petitions calling for the secession of their states. Since DCist reported on Monday that in the wake of last week's presidential election, petitions are popping on the White House's We the People page calling for various states to secede from the rest of the nation. All 50 states now have a disunion petition of their own, even Washington, believe it or not. I added that part in myself. Which, yeah, I never thought it would happen, but yeah, there's people in Washington that want to secede. Several have cleared the 25,000 signature bar required to merit an official response. Texas, Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, and North Carolina are all waiting on an answer to whether the Obama administration will permit them to withdraw from the United States and form their own sovereign governments. And with petitions remaining online for 30-day periods, it's quite likely that a few more states will reach that plateau. But as unlikely as it is that the federal government would allow Texas, with nearly 109,000 signatures, now I'm actually at the whitehouse.gov page right now, 109,769 signatures as of right now, 7.38 p.m. Eastern Time, November 15, 2012, or any other state to cast off, these petitions will get reviewed by White House officials, a spokesman tells the DCist. The White House will not comment on the particulars of any individual petition until it issues its response. But come December 9th, when Texas and other states' petitions expire, it will be weighing in on secession. Still, in the wake of the secession requests, there has been a rash of equally dopey petitions, though many have been removed. 
At various points over the past few days, there have been petitions compelling President Obama to use his influence to reinstate a sports radio host in Columbus, Ohio, who was fired for writing a threatening tweet, appoint Batman as defense secretary, name Sylvester Stallone attorney general, and grant an honorary United States Senate seat to a Virginia write-in candidate, Hank the Cat. Perhaps most riotous, though, was a short-lived petition yesterday that called for the anti-tax activist Grover Norquist to be shackled in chains, attached to a public pillory, and subjected to people punching him in the male anatomy. It, too, died a quick death. Apparently not too many people signed it. The White House spokesman pointed to its terms of participation for the We the People Project, which was launched in 2011. Petitions threatening violence or asking for the endorsement of specific political candidates, cats included, apparently are prohibited. You agree not to create petitions that fall outside of the limited purpose. For example, petitions that advertise or call for the endorsement or purchase of commercial goods or services, petitions that expressly urge the support or opposition of candidates for elected office, petitions that do not address the current or potential actions of policies of the federal government, or petitions that address a topic not included in We the People at the time the petition was created. Still, the fun petitions endure. As of this writing, there is a new petition calling for the dissolution of the common law judicial system and replacing it with a martial regime in which judges answering to a hall of justice meet out justice as they necessarily... As, as they see necessary, excuse me, they go spread justice as they see necessary while roaming the country on motorcycle. It already has more than 300 signatures. So I just thought that was a fairly interesting article. There's all types of silly uh, petitions on there, and we'll, we'll get to those here shortly. So we have Texas over 109,000. Okay, gotcha. Well, let's, uh, you know, yesterday I talked about Bilderberg attendee Rick Perry. And, of course, Perry is in it now saying Texas will not secede from the United States. I mentioned it last night. And uh, basically, I'm looking for the quote here. Rick Perry, uh, his spokesperson, Catherine Frazier, tells CBS News that the governor, quote, shares the frustrations many Americans have with our federal government, but believes in the greatness of our union and nothing should be done to change it. Now, say Governor Perry wanted to secede and, and Texas seceded, then what would Texas be left with? You would have President Rick Perry of the Republic of Texas. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of people think anything's better than Obama, but Rick Perry is just as atrocious, just as much of a sock puppet. He's been to Bilderberg. I talked about it last night. He is an example of how dumb they think the American people are, and the people in Texas are obviously not. <laughs> I mean, they voted for the guy. Hey, I, you know, we vote for some winners up here in Washington. I'm not going to you know, try to act like we're smart or anything up here, but... The American people, for the most part, said, no, Rick Perry, we don't. We, we see through you when you get on stage and you're all drunk and on prescription meds and you can't even speak English. We had enough of that with George W. But so Texas wants to secede. You have Rick Perry as your new person in charge. Uh, you know, Arizona secedes. Who do you have? I don't even know their governor, but I know Janet Napolitano was there at one time. And now you got John McCain. He's a power-hungry sock puppet. You know he's going to try to get some of the action. What about uh, Sarah Palin out there in Alaska? Alaska wants to secede. Now you got Sarah Palin. <laughs> I'm sure if Massachusetts seceded, you'd probably have Willard back there trying to take charge. So what I'm getting at here is that if we if we change the puppets, it doesn't change the collective cage. Like I said at the beginning of the broadcast, the Albert Einstein quote, the quote of the day cannot solve a problem with the same consciousness that created it you must see the world anew so if if the listeners agree that money bombs and campaign for liberties and occupy wall streets and tea parties are a waste of time why is joining a secession movement not a waste of time it's the same concept and folks i hear the music coming in we have to take a quick break but we are just getting started trying to expose this secession hoax for what it is, trying to get people to think logically, use the trivium. This is the Sound of Freedom on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Stay tuned. Be excited about. We are live Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time 
on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Now, I do want to address something here because I know it looks like I offended a lot of people in the chat room and they left because they don't like me talking about, hey, I don't, I don't agree with the secession. And one of the listeners in the chat says, well, I should have known after I watched Prison Planet TV that Orion would have had the opposite opinion. I want you to know that I already made up my mind before I even checked to see what they were talking about. The only reason why I even heard the nonsense coming out of that area was because I looked at Drudge and I saw the top headline, or rather the number two headline, excuse me, that said, Talk Show Host Calls for Second American Revolution. And I thought, wow, maybe Beck or Limbaugh or Rush or some mainline, uh, you know, <laughs> control opposition is going to be up there trying to get people all riled up in a fit. It didn't even hit me. I should have known. But, uh, you know, that's where it took me. So I figured, well, I, I don't see any articles. I wonder. So I listened to the stream and I heard crying. I heard chest pounding. I heard America, uh, you know, um, land of the free, home of the brave, America the beautiful being sung by Whitney Houston. I heard just all this rhetoric. But what I'm trying to get you guys to understand and what took me a long time to understand, too, is that we can't solve this. We can't fix the system working in the system. You can't give power to one group of people to go take it away from another group of people and then put that group of people in charge now. Because all they're going to do is end up doing what's been done to us. They're going to pull strings for people that they pick and choose. Their friends will get the benefits. We need to see the world anew. We need to walk outside of the paradigm. And that's why I was so disappointed when Jim Fetzer came on the show. Because he's got a lot of interesting information about JFK 9-11. I wanted him to talk about that. And he comes on the show talking about why we have to vote for Obama. I mean... <laughs> What I'm saying here, folks, is when you're listening to alternative news, when you're listening to investigative reporters, when you're listening to people, what are the solutions that they're offering? If they're offering you a solution inside of the system, then they're either naive or they're purposely misleading you. So why would I say that? Qui bono? Who benefits from me saying that to you? Do I get any money out of this? Am I some kind of big star? Am I going to be on TV now because I'm saying this? No. Just talking about it, people got offended and left the chat room. So it's, it's truth, though, okay? It's truth. I know. I used to run around in a circle and get mad or get sad or get excited or get happy or whatever, almost like mind control. And when I heard it today, the, the crying, the yelling, the screaming, I can feel it in my bones, 1776, alive. Uh, it, it had to get bad for people to get up. How many people are up? And I'm not trying to be pessimistic, folks, but we still had 120 million Americans who voted for evil. 120 million Americans voted for their own enslavement. 120 million. That's what, around a third of the population? How many? Don't tell me that 75% or the other, what, what 67%. Don't tell me that the other 60% of the country is standing up now. We don't, we, they're not. OK, and you can you can secede. You can take your state and go somewhere or whatever. OK, if they would even let you, which at this point they've overreached their bounds so much, they're not going to. But even if they did, your state would be a microcosm of this country. You would still have all of the social problems. You would still have humans who are so dependent on consumerism, narcissism, arrogance who have no idea what real history is, who have no idea what real money is, whose priorities are a thousand degrees backwards. You know, they're not going to care. And not to mention the fact, oh, globalists launched the strip of the citizenship petition. Globalists launched that one, huh? No. I would. Th People get crazy when you hang your flag upside down. People get crazy when you say, I don't, I don't say thank you to the troops. I know. <laughs> okay? People don't like that. So I can only imagine, especially with these trendy people who have literally been brainwashed into worshiping their false idols, into worshiping the state, into worshiping these, these, these promises, these, these fake promises. I have no doubt they looked at it and were like, oh, what? How dare they? Well, we need to start a little other petition. Look at, let's, let's, let's just go over some of the other petitions real quick, shall we? And I apologize for getting fired up, but it just frustrates me because if, if I can see this, it shouldn't be that hard. I'm not a genius. But we need to walk outside of the paradigm. Ron Paul, if Ron Paul goes along with this and starts to try to start talking about getting states to secede and he's going to write a new constitution, I hope and pray he does not. 
Because if he does, that shows who he is too. Anyone who is offering solutions inside of the system, it's not right. The system is what's wrong. Just because you change the puppet doesn't mean you get out of the collective cage. And we're going to cover collectivism versus individualism in the next hour. And I even have some encouraging quotes from the Pimpin' in Chief to play showing you the collectivist drive. And we can't solve. Please tell me, somebody in the chat, or somebody even call in. Boom, now the phone board's up. If you want to call in, 888-320-6151. Please tell me how you can solve war with more war. Tell me how you can solve debt with more debt. Tell me how you can walk up to somebody and shake them and wake them up. Eight 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 three two zero sixty one fifty one. Okay. Now, I also hear talk about I'm I'm saying I'm saying exactly what Glenn Beck Beck is saying. No, I'm not because Glenn Beck is not talking about this. Glenn Beck is saying, "Don't sign that." You'll be on a list. Then they'll know who you are. Okay, I'm gonna let's get let's get old school on them and say what Bill Cooper said about hey, there's only two lists, them and us. Okay, they already know who I am. They already know who you are. They already know. Now, Popeye brought up a good point. Hey, if you want to get on the do not fly list, that's a, probably a good way to do it. But to me, that's just oh, I I want to do it, but I don't want to sign it because then I might get killed or they're gonna come raid me. Come on. All right, I'm at whitehouse.gov right now. All right, let's look at the petitions, okay? Let's look at these petitions. The number one top petition. And also, not to mention, before I do, one other thought that came to mind. I was trying to, to figure out, has the Obama administration even answered one petition? They take 25,000 signatures to get an answer or a response or an acknowledgement. And this is another suspicious sign to me, folks. I type in petition. Obama. Petition, White House. How many petitions has the White House answered? How many petitions has Obama answered? I've tried all of those. I can't find a single article about any of that. You know what I find? Page after page after page after page after page after page after page of by every news agency and their little underling news agencies and their on-the-street reporters and people talking, talking. Everybody's talking about it. Is that not suspicious? This is like Michael Jackson died or something. The way they're bringing it out, it's on every news site, everybody. So Session, see how they are dividing us? They divide us so they can conquer us. There's the crazies who want to secede and then the crazies who don't want to secede and who want to put the people who want to secede away. And it, it's the Hegelian dialectic. That's your thesis and your antithesis right there. To secede or not to secede. But what's not in that equation at all? What's not in that equation? What's not in that Hegelian dialectic? The thesis to secede, the antithesis not to secede. What's not in that equation? You walking away from the collectivist. Stop petitioning the government. With, with all these people coming together. Look, recount the election. 59,134 votes. Peacefully grant the state of Texas to withdraw from the United States of America and create its own new government. 109,769 signatures. Uh, remove marijuana from the Federal Controlled Substance Act and allow the states to decide how they want to regulate it. 56,065 signatures. Support mandatory labeling of genetically engineered foods. 45,105 signatures. Outlaw offending prophets of major religions, 37,317. This is getting away from what our country is about. No group of people can dictate what rights you have or what I have. What if this outlaw offending prophets of major religions got a million signatures? That still goes against the First Amendment. But with our brainwashed masses... The president could go out there and say, you know what? So many Americans want this. I'm going to sign an executive order. And now you can't do that. <laughs> See what I'm saying, folks? No petition to WhiteHouse.gov is any good at all. No petition at all. You have repeal Obamacare, 36,880 signatures. Grant Louisiana, the peaceful withdrawal from the United States with 35,000 signatures. Not allow the FDA to regulate premium cigars, 33,000. Allow Florida to secede, 32,000. 
persuade South Korea to accept Japan's proposal on territorial dispute over islands, 31,496. Finalize standards for gluten-free labeling, 31,159. Support the Polish nation appeal for an international investigation of the Smolsnik 2010 air crash, 31,000. All of those things I listed are above 25,000. Have you heard about any of them? Is the White House going to even address any of them? That's why it's a fail on two fronts. They don't care, and it's trying to solve the problem with more problem. Just throw debt at that. It'll go away. Just go fight more war with that war. It'll go away. Give them more collectivism, and the collectivism will go away. This is the sound of freedom. You guys got me fired up here. Hour number one is already over, but we're going to get.